Before we discuss ways in which we can help our students to become critical thinkers, we must first understand what critical thinking encompasses. Critical thinking is the ability to analyze information rationally and make a reasonable judgment based on the evidence. Furthermore, critical thinking is not merely taking something at face value. It's looking at the whole process objectively. When students use critical thinking skills, they are not just passive learners, but rather they are actively learning. Welcome to Episode 70 of the Teacher Rockstar Podcast, a place where tips and strategies critical to the new teacher are discussed. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about helping students to become critical thinkers. But before we get into the concept of critical thinking, here is a word from our sponsor. Would you like to supercharge your classroom management skills? Well, if you're a brand new teacher, a student teacher, or perhaps you're a teacher returning back to the classroom, the Teacher Rockstar Academy course is for you. Gain the confidence, the skills, you'll need to crush it on day one and beyond. So invest in yourself and enroll now at TeacherRockstarAcademy.com. That's TeacherRockstarAcademy.com. Dot com. I promise you that this will be a most transformational experience. Okay, let's dive right in. Why is critical thinking important? Well, to put it plainly, our students need to be able to think critically to make sound decisions as to what to believe. Simply put, critical thinking is about having good justifications for why one believes what they believe. Helping your students develop critical thinking skills will not only help them in school, but in their professional lives as well. This is a skill that employers look for in their employees. Let's consider the type of questions that foster critical thinking. The questions that the teacher asks should encourage and motivate students to find reasonable answers. Questions should not simply be yes or no answers, but rather should be open-ended. As teachers, what we want to provide our kids is in-depth strategies prior to beginning a lesson. In other words, we need to ask thought-provoking questions that lead to answers with sound reasoning. Make sense? Uh, quick answers often end up being just a few words and don't foster much in the way of critical thinking. When asking student questions, I'm going to provide you a few examples of the kinds of questions we should be asking. I'm going to share with you some examples of the types of questions that we should be asking. Number one, do we need to consider another point of view? Number two, is there another way to look at this question? Number three, could you be more specific? Number four, will you provide more details? And number five, would you give me an example? Now these are just some of the types of questions that you could be asking and there's many many more that you could ask. Remember the key here is to open up more possibilities for further discussion and analyzing. Let's consider some ways that you could jumpstart critical thinking across the curriculum. We can begin the lesson or a unit with a probing idea. Now again this should not be a question with a yes or no answer. The type of question you ask should inspire discovery and the ability to problem solve. Encourage creativity. For example, instead of having creative projects already prepared for the students, instead give the students all of the supplies that they will need to create the project and let them do it on their own. Resist the temptation. I know it's hard at times, but resist the temptation to jump in and help the kids too fast. Let students work through the creation of the project to foster their creativity and not to stifle it. Another thing that could be done is to incorporate opportunities for students to find connections and learning. Now, what does that look like? Well, encourage students to make connections to a real-world situation and identify patterns, which is a great way to reinforce their critical thinking skills. I want to share some other strategies that will supercharge students' critical thinking skills. We can use word analogies. Ask a variety of open-ended questions. Allow reflection time. Use real-life situations. Allow for thinking time, which incidentally 
is a great strategy. A lot of times we just want to hurry up and move on. And lastly, encourage interaction among peers. Things like think, pair, share, or turn to a partner are great learning opportunities. Next, I'm going to be discussing seven elements that are involved in critical thinking. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Imagine having access to educational products, instructional videos, teacher podcasts, and articles worth over $1,000 for just pennies a day. Now, wouldn't you agree that would be super cool? And you know what the best part is? You get a seven-day free trial. So really, what do you have to lose? Check it out and take a look around. Go to MyTeacherMembership.com. That's MyTeacherMembership.com. I know you're going to love being part of this teacher membership community. Okay, let's continue on. Now I'm going to be talking about the seven elements that are involved in critical thinking. Number one, being open-minded. Critical thinkers have to be open to more than one point of view. One needs to maintain an openness to challenge the information. In other words, thinking outside the box. Number two, analyze information. Analyze the information well enough to be able to draw conclusions based on the data presented. Number three, open to interpretations. Taking the time to interpret one's analysis and meaning of the information that's presented. Number four, problem solving. The ability to come up with more than one plausible solution. Number five, decisiveness. Making a decision based upon the data you have interpreted. Number six, communication. Being able to convincingly explain your conclusions and your thought process to others. And number seven, self-improvement. Development of positive habits and able to reflect on their own critical thinking skills and ways to improve it. In conclusion, critical thinking will prepare our students for the future with respect to thinking for themselves and not following groupthink. It will prevent them from going along with the crowd. Well, this brings us to the end of another episode. Hope you found a golden nugget or two from the information presented. Feel free to reach out should you have any questions or comments about this episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles. When you get a moment, visit my blog and subscribe to my newsletter for the latest educational research, best practices, and unadvertised free bonuses. Go to stevesclassroomresources.blogspot.com. And don't forget to subscribe to us at the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. And if you'd like to support us, please feel free to share our podcast with others. Post about it on social media. Leave a rating and review. That would be super, super cool. Thanks again, and we'll see you same time, same place next week. And remember, my friend, you got this.